What is up YouTube? Welcome back. It's Rahul and we're going over another deck profile today for competitive Pokemon TCG. Today's video is going to be featuring ADP. I know you guys probably either love the card or hate the card, but you can't deny that it's one of the best cards that's ever existed in the Pokemon TCG and everyone is happy to see it rotate because it has had a pretty hard stronghold on the um, on the game as a, as a whole. But ADP's had to adapt over the course of the metagame, obviously, and this newest iteration of ADP is actually pretty cool, where you play it with a bunch of toolbox cards, and, well, you get to kind of see how it works against a bunch of different typings, so without further ado, uh, we'll talk about the deck real quick, and then we'll jump into some games. If you guys already aren't familiar with ADP, Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia GX, it is really, really good, uh, because of its GX attack, Altered Creation, for a metal, and then a water on top of that, it does 30, all your Pokemon do 30 more damage to the opponent active, and you also take an extra prize card every knockout. That's pretty broken. Now, ADP was revered and feared or whatever because you could just go Alter Creation GX and then Ultimate Ray up to grab a, like two bosses' orders, grab a Dedenne, grab a Crobat, and the game would end. Like, straight up, you would just win the game off the back of that. 280 HP is also a very awkward number to hit. Then cards like Eternatus and all these things started coming out, especially Shadow Rider with Pale Moon GX. These cards are all really, really good against ADP GX because they can kind of put it in its place. It's a these VMAX Pokemon are putting it in check, so the deck had to adapt to some sort of a toolbox build. And this is the list I kind of been landing on, and I was going to play it last night at a um, in a tournament, but I had some things come up, so I didn't get a chance to portray it. I might play it in chill tonight. Uh, it's also my mother's birthday, so uh, if you're watching this, say happy birthday with Will's mom in the comments below, or Mrs. Reddy. Um, so we're probably going out for a family dinner or something like that, because my mom loves buffalo wings. So let's jump into some of the other cards before we talk about my mom's love for buffalo wings. Uh, you also play two copies of Zacian V, just because you need Intrepid Sword, and Brave Blade is also one of the best attacks in the game. I do want to have a third, but I'm currently trying out some of the other toolboxy style cards uh, before I can go back to determining if I need a third Zacian or not uh, at the current moment. You still have your Captivating Wing Kamalwell. Wily Bite is still really good. Attacking for two energy cannot be understated in a deck like this when you have so many three energy attackers. So having uh, a way to just go Attachment and Metal Saucer onto the Mawile and punish any deck that has a mid to heavy bench is really, really strong. Uh, really good against Eternatus, obviously, still, uh, which is still one of our worst matchups, technically speaking. And you can also set up a two-shot using Wily Bite onto anything. Uh, we play a copy of Aegislash because Decidueye has been rising in popularity recently. And um, I think in a format where Decidueye doesn't exist, this Aegislash can be cut for pretty much whatever. But I think for the time being, Decidueye is rising in popularity. So you would want to have this card. This is the exact list I would have played last night, by the way. So it's like not like a list that I think is untested or whatever. This is a list that I literally would have played last night because I think these cards are good for the current metagame. And I think Decidueye did end up winning the event last night or got like second or something like that. So Sonic Edge is really good to just deal with that matchup. And um, I mean, there's really nothing to write home about. You just like absolutely destroy the matchup. And even if you don't get Age of Slash out of the prize cards, uh, or if it's prized, like you pretty much almost guarantee yourself two to four prizes in that matchup because of Mawile. Um, so yeah, you're in a good spot anyway. Um, there's two copies of Dedenne GX and one copy of Crobat to set up and Elder Goss as well to get your supporter back. Uh, there's one copy of Ninetales V, which has Ninetales Shapeshifter, which lets you use your opponent's active attack as its attack. Um, this is pretty much just a tech card that I'm trying out because I think it could be good against like just copying other attacks, stuff like that. This could also just be an Echoing Horn. I haven't decided yet um, what would just be better because Echoing Horn plus Boss is probably just a reasonable way to end the game. But using Nine-Tailed Shapeshifter could just be kind of cute and quirky is really how I look at it. Um, yeah, just trying that card out. Uh, one Glare and Zapdos because again, uh, Eternus is not a great matchup and uh, Fighting Instinct is a very strong ability. It Thunder's Kick not only applies in this matchup specifically against uh against um the turnus but it can also come into play against other pokemon that have v like heavy v pokemon in their deck it's just a good it's just a good card i really like galarian zapdos as a whole and there's two copies of galarian moltres with Dire flame wings they self accelerate so also like turn two turn three against uh shadow rider you can just jump into the galarian moltres switch into that pivot just do a lot of damage um we do have to play mew because uh because rabbit striker shifu is very strong um, still, and that will hurt a lot if we don't play Mew. Uh, two copies of Cherish Ball, four copies of Quick Ball are set up for the most part. We are playing less setup cards, um, because we're trying to make room for more of the toolboxy style cards. But there's two copies of Energy Spinner, because we play a bunch of different kinds of energy now. Um, three copies of E-Switch. So the game plan still isn't to turn one ADP GX. If we get it, that's super nice. But if we don't, we don't. It's as simple as that. Uh, one copy of Rope, two copies of Switch, and two copies of Air Balloon to kind of get our ball rolling. Two copies of Chaotic Swell because Path to the Peak does hurt us a lot more than it did previously. 
Uh, previously, power plant, that kind of stuff didn't really hurt ADP because exhaustion could go through power plant. And, um, well, you didn't really care because you had Crobat also, but Path to the Peak kind of answers all of these checks that you have. Um, so you do need to play Chaotic Swell or some sort of a stadium to deal with Path to the Peak specifically. Uh, one copy of Great Catcher because I think it's just understated to have a card that, a trainer card that does the effect of a supporter even with a negative effect attached to it, even if it's discard two. But it does let us get ahead because we can use two, like two supporters in one turn, basically. Uh, four copies of Metal Saucer, Broken Guard. We need it for all the metal types in the deck, um, obviously. Three copies of Boss. Um, the deck isn't so much boss-centric anymore. Uh, we can deal with what's in the active a lot more reliably. But that being said, um, we do have like technically four boss effects as well as a rope. So it's like a 4.5 boss effect in the deck, which is fine, I think. Two copies of Marnie. I don't know if I'm sold on Marnie as a supporter, uh, like the backup supporter. I just don't know. I just know I don't want to discard all these cards that we have going a lot of the time. Uh, so maybe like two Marnie is fine, or maybe like playing a Skyla in a stamp or something is fine. I don't know. I would like to have just more support, but I don't, I'm not entirely sure if two Marnie is the correct call, but Marnie has always been the safe bet. These three supporter cards are probably the best package to just play in any deck uh, in the standard format now and probably post rotation as well. So, and then Professor's Research, four of, um, absolutely necessary. So the deck is still the deck. ADP is still ADP. So let's jump into some games and I'll show you guys how it works. First game of the day we're up against Mega, Mega Charizard? That's not a real deck. Um, we do win the coin flip, that is good for us. Ideal situation is like getting the ADP down, getting an energy onto it. Wow, this is very nice actually. The rest of the hand does suck. Top taking a quick ball would be super ideal. <clears throat> um, because then we can get a Zacian to play and draw some cards. But otherwise this hand is really suspect and I don't really know how we can win. Oh boy, okay. Um. We're up against like a dark box style deck, it looks like, which should be a favorable matchup, um, all things considered, unless they get like the turn three Pale Moon, turn two Pale Moon off, which I think they would need attachment this turn, Dire Flame Wings this turn, Red and Blue next turn, Dire Flame Wings next turn, attachment next turn. So they would need exactly that onto a Mewtwo or the Dark Rite Umbreon to get the attack off. Now, maybe he goes ahead and... It's Valmar v Max. Okay, never mind. It's a very different kind of deck. This deck relies on healing a lot more and kind of playing off the back of that tag call meaning he's probably going to grab the red and blue as well as they cynthia caitlin just draw some cards um maybe goose mahala get a capture energy just set up the board a little bit further um either way i don't think i'm getting marnied here anytime soon this hand's not great oh there's the umbreon dark eye just research okay so they do play an umbreon dark eye in malamar v max which is a little bit interesting he could have grabbed that calmed it back in and grabbed another support or setup card, like another Sneasel or something, which would have been okay, or maybe another Malamar V. Hey, you never know, I could knock this out next turn. Uh, it's very unlikely, but I could. Um, there's the Capture Energy. I, I, they always play like one to two Capture Energy in these styles of decks because um, Dark Box is like a deck that has not ever been tier one like it is currently. Um, but because of its tier two-ness, um, it's always had like, some sort of a presence on the format um but now that it has a really good matchup it's been it's been doing well okay wonderful top deck i do not care about the rest of this hand goodbye everybody it was nice knowing you sayonara um okay so from here on out we got to think about it. he's got two v pokemon in play does he put down a third i think zapdos is fine to put down just generically it's not like a card that's going to swing any matchup here win me a matchup or anything we're going to attach the aurora so we can get the attack off we're going to Cherish for the Dedenne, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and Dedenne this hand. Because if we can go ahead and grab ourselves a Glare and Moltres this turn. Also, getting that energy out of the board seems very strong. Getting Zacian into play seems very strong. All these cards seem very good. Chaotic Swell. We're going to get Dire Flame Wings the energy onto the board. And we're going to go ahead and GX. Now, I have the Spinner next turn for the attack if I want it. Um, I'll more than likely grab a Dark Energy and use that as opposed to a Metal. So I can accelerate the Metal onto the board. And we're in a good spot. We have three prizes here, and if you evolve into Weavile, there's the other three prizes for the game. We are down to one boss in the deck, as well as one Eldegoss. Uh, our Great Catcher would have really come into handy against the Weavile. But I'm not complaining too much because our opening hand was really, really bad, and we were in a really precarious position. But two turns later, look where we are. Welcome to ADP. If he goes Malmar VMAX also, we could just try to two-shot that, and then take one prize, like a knockout here on like Darkrai or something. Um... 
So he is playing some sort of a weird hybrid between everything. Usually, um, Mal or like red and blue, like dark box style decks are either playing Malamar VMAX as the core engine, or they're playing Mewtwo as the core engine. But it looks like our opponent here is playing a combination of both, which I don't know if it's good, because uh, you need a lot to make that kind of a thing work. Um, so space is definitely probably weird in their deck. Maybe they're not playing as many tag teams. Maybe they're not playing as many support mods. Maybe Silvalli doesn't exist in this version. So far, we haven't seen any trace of a Silvalli. So maybe they just stop playing Silvalli. If they drop the Mewtwo, we can try to two-shot that as well. Um, important to note, in this build currently with the Toolbox style, we are not playing uh, any damage modifiers beyond our GX attack. So we don't have... Uh, Rustic Sword, we don't have uh, Vitality Band, we don't have any of these cards that could put us a little bit over the edge. Um, maybe it's worth playing a Vitality Band, I've been thinking about it, because 260 to 270 here, uh, 220 to 230 here, uh, 200 to 210 here, maybe, but I also just don't think we need to. I think everything else is fine. We're about to get dragged off. We do have another Switch in deck and a Balloon, so maybe they're, no, I think they're just going to go ahead and confuse us, actually. Do we flip through Confusion? I feel like that's really ballsy. Huh. I mean, if we can just get this off, that'd be really nice. So maybe we just go look for that. So we're going to start with this, I think. Grab the Dark to put it into the discard. We have two Balloons, so we can retreat this guy, like, super freely. Um... I think we're just going to thin Quick Ball and then Cherish this hand. We're going to do this. Do this. Quick Ball, and then I can Cherish for Dedene. So let's grab this. Cherish for Dedene and pitch the hand. Um, the Zapdos is also a very viable attacker here at any point because he's got the 3 V Pokemon into play, so I can just attack for one energy. Um... Yeah, I guess we can just research. Uh, worst comes to worst. I wanted to keep Ninetales, actually, in this matchup, because 180, I can return back and discard a card from his hand. But I think that's not going to be possible. Aegislash is probably... Oh, I'll just go to Mew first, because I think Aegislash is probably better to have as an attacker, potentially, than um, Mew would. Um, so I have to make the decision here. Do I think we're going to be able to attack with Moltres or... Zacian. I think Moltres is probably our more liable, reliable attacker because we get the acceleration already. Um, nice. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to Dire Flame Wings. Uh, so in this mirror match also, you have to keep in mind against Dark Fox style decks, they can also Dire Flame Wings just back. Like they can just literally just Dire Flame Wings and re-accelerate the energy and knock us out because 190 into 190 because we take 30 damage from our uh, Aura Barn attack. So he has the knockout back into me, but if he does this, I can just come back up with Saucer and try to win because I have Saucers in the deck. So the plan would go to be find Saucer and a switching card, or we already have a switching out here ready to go. So we just have to find a Saucer because we have two, two more left in the deck. Saucer plus attachment or Saucer plus energy switch, something of that nature. So we're already like in the driver's seat pretty handedly. And there comes a Marnie. Um, There comes a morning. There's a saucer. There's a quick ball. I believe Crobat's in deck, and there's a concession. All right, game two. Let's get it. All right, second game here. We saw how that really, really bad start actually got turned around really quickly, and we pretty much took the game without even sweating. Uh, but that was against a little bit of a slower setup style deck, so maybe this deck is not that. Uh, maybe we get put under some pressure here um, in the early game. We'll see if our opponent can, you know. Give us some pressure here, honestly. Uh, we do we lose go second. So we have a couple options here. Based on our hand, we can choose to try to go get the turn one ADP GX. Probably our best opener here. Cherish ball, boom. Cherish ball for the guy attached there. Did any of the hands seems fine to me. Or I can research the hand. No, maybe just did any of the hand seems fine to me. Open Dire Flame Wings guy. 
Um, always a safe bet because then our opponent's guessing what we're actually playing. We can't really, we don't really reveal any information based on opening Dire Flame Wings. We just know we're playing Dark Energy. So if they're playing something like Shadow Rider Calyrex, they'll be scared. If they're not, they don't care. Clefairy. Maybe Dragapult. Uh, maybe some sort of other Energy Denial deck. Maybe Inteleon. Those are the only three decks I can really think of that play Clefairy in their deck. Um, yeah, just just uh, energy to bounce. So we have to be just careful about that because if we ADPGX recklessly or like use too many resources, uh, we can just get put into a position where we don't get to play the game after that. Okay, so we could even just forego the ADPGX. Never mind, that was a really good top deck. Okay, so Cherish Ball, we're gonna grab the ADP. We've got three E Switch, we've got four Saucer, we've got a bunch of metal types in the deck. So let's try to get this GX off this turn, if we can. Aurora Energy to the bench. Uh, the Denix want the extra dig first. We can probably find a research off of the dig or the money or something like that. Right, okay, okay. There's a research. We have a switching card. Um, having a second copy of Dire Flame Wings and Ability seems fine because I want to kind of capitalize on having Dark Types in play, but also you can just boss boss. So yeah, we're just going to pitch it. Um, okay, we missed the E switch, which is a little bit unfortunate. We're gonna go ahead and saucer anyway. Swell so we don't get stuck somewhere. We're gonna saucer again. I'm going to let the Moltres take a hit. Um, I think. I think letting Moltres take a hit's fine here, and then we're just gonna Intrepid Sword. Okay. So we drew our third saucer, which is not ideal. But if he if he goes ahead and gets rid of energy, it's probably gonna be the Aurora anyway. So we're probably gonna touch the Aurora here again and try to do what we did last turn again. Now, another play we could realistically make if we top deck like a Dark Energy or something of those of that nature is E-switch uh, Metal from the Bench to the active, attach the Aurora Energy, find the Dark, and then go ahead and just Aura Burn this guy and knock it out. Um, which is like not a bad play whatsoever. Like that play seems really, really good uh, if we can get that off, but that requires a lot of cards uh, to pull off. There's a spinner and there's a water. Boom. That's our attack for the turn. Um, we're going to hold the quick ball and those pieces unless he switches stadium here. If he bumps stadium, then we have to kind of probe at this turn. We're kind of put in that position. Rugged helmet. Interesting. Rope. I don't want to give him a hit into this, though. I think we got to go into this. Okay. So we're going to probably go ahead and... There's a bump. So we have to kind of make our play. We have to make our move this turn. Okay. He's going to probably put the five here onto the Moltres because that's the biggest threat for him. Yeah. Figured as much. Okay. There's a research, actually. That's pretty good. So we're going to grab this so we can discard it. We c Like I said, we could look to make the play with... With um, Moltres, maybe is that too greedy? That might be too greedy. I don't know. That feels a little bit greedy. Uh, any support we want to use in here? Nope. Um, probably can just pitch a card here. So let's get rid of this guy. I think we're gonna play it safe and just go for the GX attack because we can use Moltres over the course of two turns. We don't have to do it all this turn. Um, Yeah, we wouldn't have gotten there anyway, so it's fine. Rope to make him move as well. Uh, I want to hold the balloon because this thing is probably super, super dead. Um, and just GX. Now, we do have the E-switch. So, all we're looking for is like a dark energy. Or, yeah, just a dark energy. We have a balloon in hand also. No crushing hammer, please. I mean, he'd go active, right? No, he'd go bench probably. Because the bench is probably the scariest thing for him to deal with. Nice. Double tails. We're living. Fog crystal. That does not do anything, really, to stop us active, which means now I can't take the free two prizes here. I mean, I still can. I have the E-Switch, right? So we're going to go ahead and just do it. Uh, he has a zero card hand. I don't have any reason to hesitate anymore. Uh, we go. Boom, boom. Ultimate raid. We take two prizes. Now this Dragapult knockout means we win the game. The game is now as simple as this. And we get all our darks into play. Boom. Boom. And boom. Now, even if he comes up with a Dragapult, the game is literally over because he cannot one-shot us. There it is, two games. 
ADP, still one of the most broken decks in the format. I would advise looking into it still. Um, don't discount the deck. It's very strong. Um, brand new cards got added to it. It's nice and flashy. If you guys enjoyed the content, obviously like, subscribe. I really appreciate everyone who's been showing me a lot of support recently. It's been really awesome to see my content grow. Uh, when in-person tournaments come back, you guys can expect a lot of good content from me as well, vlogs, etc. I plan on helping you guys get all your world invites. Um, so yeah, that's uh, my spiel. Thank you.